And CNN Aviation Correspondent Pete Montine joins us now. Pete, you have uh, new information on this. What can you tell us? We're just getting a statement now, Jim, from NORAD, and I want to read it to you. This is from CNN's Haley Britsky from Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida. NORAD says F-16 fighter aircraft responded to an unresponsive Cessna Citation jet. That is a very large business jet, seats between 7 and 11 people. This happened earlier today in Northern Virginia. NORAD aircraft, this statement says, were authorized to travel at supersonic speeds, which would explain the sonic boom that was heard far and wide from Annapolis, Maryland to Leesburg, Virginia, all the way down to Manassas and Quantico. NORAD says in this statement, during this event, the NORAD aircraft also used flares, which may have been visible to the public in an attempt to draw attention to the pilot. Uh, flares were deployed with the highest regard for safety uh, of the intercepted aircraft and people on the ground. The plane was intercepted around 3.20 Eastern time today. Uh, and the pilot was unresponsive, subsequently, subsequently crashed near the George Washington National Forest in Virginia. I'm also hearing from a source familiar with this investigation that four people were on board this airplane. Pilot unresponsive. The plane overshot its initial destination in New York by about 300 and 15 miles. You can see the track there on flight tracking site FlightAware. The plane took off from uh, Tennessee and then went northeast bound over northern Virginia, over the eastern shore of Maryland, Delaware, southern New Jersey, and then turned inbound for Long Island there. Then proceeded to fly southwest bound and through the layer and layer and layer of restricted airspace around Washington, D.C. It's known as the flight restricted zone and the special flight rules area. That apparently is what triggered this intercept. To me right now, I can tell you as a pilot and a flight instructor, this sounds like the Payne Stewart incident. You may remember back in the 90s when the pro golfer was on board his Learjet and that airplane had a sudden loss of cabin pressurization. The crew as well as the passengers on board passed out because of the high altitude altitude, uh, the high altitude air outside, not breathable inside. Therefore, fighter jets were scrambled in a similar incident to try and intercept that airplane. Ultimately, that plane crashed. So we know, at least from the Virginia State Police, that they are still searching for the wreckage here in a very rural area of Virginia. But the latest information from NORAD is that the pilot was unresponsive and that fighter jets were scrambled and they were okay to go supersonic. So all of yeah. the things are lining up here. It was not just a sonic boom that we heard, not just a military pilot who eked through the sound barrier by accident. This was something that was intentional and they were trying to get to this airplane with the pilot who was not responding. So it does not seem, at least right now, that this was something that was intentional, not like something it was a, a terroristic act. This is something where the pilot was not responding and they had to send fighter jets to rule out some possibilities here, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. And Pete, I, I, if we can, I, I don't know if we can show that graphic one more time for our viewers, because I think that was very helpful. Earlier in this hour, we were talking about whether or not the plane just took off from northeast tip of Tennessee and then crashed in the mountains of Virginia. That is that I, that can under uh, underline why it was so alarming for military officials, U.S. Air Force officials, for that plane to go all the way up to Long Island and then turn around and come back down that's very strange. That's very unusual to see something like that happen, Pete. What do you think? And, and, and that is something that still needs to be explained here. Yeah. But if there was a rapid loss of cabin pressurization in this airplane and the pilots and passengers passed out because of the thin air outside, they were up relatively high, initially saw between 30 and 40,000 feet, you can't maintain consciousness for very long. You have to put oxygen masks on very, very quickly. Um, so you can see the path there initially. So at the bottom right corner of your screen to the, sorry, bottom left corner of your screen to the top right corner of your screen, that was the initial path. And you can see that the plane went around what would be the D.C. area there and then flew over Long Island Islip there and turned back to the southwest. So it's possible the airplane was on automatic pilot, that it may have just sort of continued flying on a heading after it reached the destination. You can see the green track there after it yeah. button hooks around on Long Island.